So I am extremely happy to be here to talk about a project that uh, we have a state leadership state leadership team that has literally been working on this for about three years. So we've got some exciting news that I'm going to share with you later uh, after this presentation. But first of all, I would like to tell you a little bit more about a statewide uh, initiative for our uh, state that uh, we believe will help fill the, help solve or partially solve the skills gaps that industry is telling us as educators is desperately needed. And it's a model that is actually being used by many, many states, as you'll see on a map that I'm going to show you here in, in a bit. And Washington State, we've got, we've, we're known for quite a few initiatives. If your educators, our IBEST uh, practices is being copied in other states. Centers of excellence are being copied in other states. So uh, we've got a lot of great projects that we're known for. But I believe that we are behind the eight ball when it comes to having industry recognize nationally, or national, nationally recognized credentials that we believe would help streamline the hiring process. So I'm the center of, I represent the Center of Excellence for Aerospace and Advanced Manufacturing. We hear all the time, uh, we're getting job applicants that do not have applied math skills. I know that that's in the uh, construction industry. I suspect it's also in the uh, energy sector. Critical thinking is another one. If you're an industry person, how many times do you feel you have job applicants that don't understand critical thinking or team player? Well, there is a, an assessment out there that can be used that will tell you by the certificate that they're carrying that they've been assessed in applied mathematics, assessed in reading comprehension, assessed in locating information or critical thinking. So with that, I'd like to share our website. The website was actually developed from um, a grant that Washington State received, a $20 million uh, DOL TAC-1 grant back uh, in 2011. And we embedded uh, some of these skills assessments that industry was telling us in a pre-employment uh, certificate and we embedded the National Career Readiness Certificate. With that, it was so successful with our industry partners that we um, wrote that in the Department of Labor grant that Barbara just mentioned, the WISE grant that we were very successful in getting. And so with the funding, we are uh, broadening, broadening the net and we're including not only aerospace, advanced manufacturing, construction, uh, customer service representatives, and energy. But we believe we can do even more. Uh, uh, a year ago, uh, there were a team of us from Washington State that joined ACT's Work Ready Community Academy. And it was a year-long process where uh, we joined the state of uh, North Carolina and Michigan. And we went, we learned, we, we figured out what our North Star was, we figured out strategies, who our stakeholders were, and we developed a plan. So it is really exciting for, for us, and I'm going to bring our team up here later on, because we have seen the needle go this way. And anytime you've worked that long on a project and you've seen some growth, it's pretty exciting. Right now, I'd like to share, this is the Work Ready Washington website. Um, you will notice that it is funded, if I can scroll down here, uh, through Air Washington. That was the first grant uh, that I mentioned. It was a $20 million grant involving 11 community technical colleges to grow capacity in aerospace and advanced manufacturing. And now the WISE grant, uh, which will build capacity not only in advanced manufacturing, but the energy sector and construction jobs as well. This website is important because it gives you everything you need to know if you want, if you are a student, if you are a business, or if you are a, 
um, a community that wants to grow, uh, to see economic vitality grow within your community. And you need some assessments or you want to give uh, another tool to your um, students or your job applicants, something that will tell you, industry, what their skill set is when it comes to applied math, uh, critical thinking, and reading comprehension. So, I think the best thing I can do is to play a video that will kind of uh, give you an idea. No, actually, I need to bring Deborah Lyons up here first and explain what ACT and CRC is and how it came about. Because can I have a raise of hands? How many of you know about ACT's National Career Readiness Certificate? Oh, great. How many of you know about Work Keys? Awesome. All right. So I'm going to bring Deborah up here, and she's going to explain uh, a little bit more about the NCRC and ACT. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. She's bringing my video up, and I just wanted to um, share with you how much I've enjoyed being here today. Um, I thought the morning sessions were just fantastic, listening to your Commerce Department talking about the things that they were doing. Really enjoyed listening about the whole construction management and the software tools that were out there. Wow, had no idea all that integration was taking place um, in, uh, you know, uh, between just the design and um, bringing all the aspects together. So what a great morning. And then I thought those students were amazing. Were they not wonderful? Oh my gosh, I was so fascinated watching their projects. Yeah, um, I will share with you, I'm an engineer by training. I have a dual engineering degree, so I really enjoyed the morning sessions. And, um, and then I have taught at a technical college, engineering technology, so I really enjoyed watching the students, so that was great. Thank you, Mary Kay, and thank you to the Washington team for allowing us to be here. We have really enjoyed working with the Washington team. Um, I'm going to have to come back more often because every time I come here, it's like these beautiful blue skies and fabulous weather. Oh, it's just great. So what I want to do is talk with you a little bit about who we are and what we're doing around work ready communities. And a lot of folks may not know too much about ACT. How many of you took an ACT exam to get into college? All right, that's how you might know us. Um, we're a nonprofit. We we're a very mission-driven company, and that is helping people achieve education and workplace success. We also produce the Work Readiness System, which is comprised of work use assessments. Um, just like the ACT exam is actually designed and derived based on the curriculum in the freshman year. And what we do is help um, teachers and students be successful in that freshman year of college because if they can do that, their chances of completing are much better. That's what we're doing in the work readiness system with work keys. We're actually designing an assessment and a certificate that comes from real world jobs. And we're looking at what does it take to, for, to successfully train an individual to be, to master what's needed in the workplace. And a lot of our focus is really on these high demand, um, high skilled jobs. So I um, want to always start because why are we doing what we're doing? We're a nonprofit. As a company, we're investing in work-ready communities. So if you're using work keys in the National Caribbean Certificate anywhere in the country, we're going to help you build a community approach for that talent pipeline development. And a lot of it is just this most recent article I read in Site Selection Magazine that says the economy is getting better. But the economy is getting better, but we're still seeing these gaps, particularly in skilled jobs, particularly in construction and energy jobs, manufacturing jobs. This is where the greatest challenges are. So why is that, and how long can we continue this? And that's why we're here in building work-ready communities. We're a partner, but it takes lots of partners coming together. It's a role for ACT, a role for community colleges, a role for workforce agencies, economic developers, and a role for industry. So we're all in it together to make this work. Um, we're really working at certifying foundational skills um, for a level ready to be trained. And why that is so critical is I always tell folks we talk around people. We talk about a skills gap. We talk about a skills shortage. But we don't really talk about telling a person what does it mean to be a skilled worker. And that's a lot of what we want to do here, is help people know what it is and know what the skills are that you're looking for in business and industry. And my focus is high demand, wealth generating jobs. 
and that's what the construction and energy industry are, along with manufacturing. They are absolutely essential to a community. That's why the governor in Washington State is investing so much funding into these industry sectors. It's wealth generation. So we talk about this, and it's really going to take all these players coming together. Um, I talk about the, the workforce, and we really focus on emerging, transitioning, and current. Those, what does that mean? It means folks coming out of school, folks that have lost a job, or folks that have a job and want a better job. Because those are the people walking in your facilities looking for a job. It'll be one of those three groups. Educators and workforce professionals are the folks that are really responsible for developing that pipeline. Economic developers need those tools in order to promote the community or to keep business here. And then employers are the key focus point for all of these groups. All of these together really come about making what ACT is calling work ready communities. And it's got to be simple. We're looking to scale something nationally. We're looking to solve a major issue in major industry clusters. But you've got to keep it simple. And we're keeping it based on something called the National Career Readiness Certificate. It's a portable national credential where people are earning it and employers are recognizing it. And it's based on work ease assessments. And the skill levels that are determined from this come from job analysis. In this case, we have over 20,000 job profiles that ACT job profilers have done across the country. Most of them, by the way, sit in a community college or a workforce agency somewhere in the country. And what we have learned in our 30 years of doing this work is there are three core areas that are needed to be successfully trained to do skilled jobs. Locating information is the number one. What that means is you are visually looking at something on a computer screen and you are deciding, you're making a decision. You know, it may be a, a screen with statistical process control and you're looking at graphs and charts and you're making a decision on whether or not to go, no go, what's happening. I looked at those drawings today for the construction management man, uh, program. Think of the amount of skill you have to have to read those blueprints and know what they mean. And everybody building that building has to know what that means, all locating information. Interestingly enough, there is no course in locating information. So we are really trying to bring skill level up in individuals and marry it into academic programs of study. And both of these things together create your talent. Reading for information or actually reading you know, uh, blueprints, reading um, memos, um, reading instructions. Those are the things that are needed for on the job. And applied math, there are actually math problems on the job. So what do we do when we're awarding it? We could talk about assessments and we're ACT. We love to talk about assessments. But at the end of the day, we've got to talk about certification and results in a simple language, a common language between education and employers. So we've aggregated these skills up, and we're talking about them in levels, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, where bronze is a level three in those three assessments, minimum skilled job. Gold is a level five. And just to give you a feeling for what this means is basically when we aggregate the data together, about 21% of the folks in this country are at a bronze level. About 18% are at gold, and 1% are at platinum. And that's based on over 2 million assessments. And we've actually looked, continued to look at this data. It doesn't change much yet. But we're hoping we begin to move this needle. Here's what the jobs are looking like. 93, if you have a gold certificate, you're able to be trained for 93% of the jobs in this country. And the data we're looking at, the reason you struggle in the energy and construction industry is those are gold level jobs. 18% at gold. 93% of the jobs requiring it. And I can guarantee you, you'll hear more and more information. I'm thinking from my colleague here. These are gold level jobs. As a matter of fact, in the industrial construction industry, they're bordering platinum. If you're in there, you know, welding on a nuclear power plant, assembling, you know, working on bridges, all of these things are a very high skill set with a lot of technology integrated in it now. And that is the communication gap we have in this country. And that's the one we're looking to help solve. And it takes you as industry leaders coming along and recognizing these credentials 
in partnership with the folks in Washington State that are doing some really good work here to solve this problem. The National Career Readiness Certificate is a foundational assessment or certificate in stackable credentials recommend, recognized now by 27 industry associations, including the Manufacturing Association and the Center for an Energy Workforce as well, recognize this as a foundational skill assessment. Combining that into stackable credentials, which your community and technical colleges do a wonderful job in Washington State. It takes a lot of partners to make this happen. When Mary Kay talked about how hard they've been working, and I know the whole team here, they have been working extremely hard. Because if this was easy, I tell people it would be done. This is some of the toughest work you have to do in this workforce development space. Um, we, ICT, I consider us to be the glue, and I always tell people I enjoy being the glue. I love getting the opportunity to work with these great folks across this country every day. We also have an advisory board of C-level executives that are helping us as well, overseeing this. What are we doing? We're setting goals around individuals earning a certificate in, all those, in every aspect of the workforce and employers recognizing it. But I'm going to show you some of the results around this, because something this simple is really beginning to drive change community by community. We set goals, we measure success, we award results. When the communities in Washington State become certified, ACT will license this badge to them, and it's a way for their Commerce Department to be able to promote those communities or regions or state um, as having a workforce development strategy in place that is measuring and closing the skills gap. So a little bit about what this looks like across the country. We have 24 states currently engaged. Um, and obviously, we're really ex proud of the leadership we see in Washington State, um, you know, really coming out and, and really leading up in the Pacific Northwest. So what's the value? I go back for individuals. It's helping them understand the foundational skill level. When we begin to look at the data across the country, one of the things that I see it's about 15% of the high school students cannot earn a bronze certificate, and they're going to graduate from high school. So you as employers want to know what the challenge is. That's one of the ones we've got to solve. We have to help young people understand what it means to be skilled. And I'm talking about just the, these hard, these hard skills, cognitive skills. There's a whole other aspect and dimension for soft skills as well, the showing up on time. For employers, one of the things we've learned is often across the country, some employers are paying for these, these assessments and that. Other times, the states are providing these resources at no cost. But 86% said it was worth their time and investment. Two-thirds are reporting a reduction in organizational turnover. And those of you in the industry side know what it costs to train a worker. You want to keep them. 63 were reporting increases in productivity and 82% saying this is helpful for meeting organizational goals. So we have tons of employers supporting in the country in, in, over the last two and a half years since we've really been adding the industry side, we now have over 9,200 um, employers recognizing that number grows anywhere from 50 to 150 per week. That's how fast this is really beginning to take off. And it, what employers have to do is they recognize or recommend, they say, yep, you have a National Caribbean Certificate on your resume, I know what that means. As a matter of fact, I kind of want you walking in the door with one. That's the commitment from industry. As you begin to learn more about this and it has more value to you, you will find more and more ways of using it, and you'll hear about that in just a few moments. For economic developers, the National Caribbean Certificate now is being used by Site Selection Magazine to determine the top 10 most competitive states in the country. All top 10 of them are using the National Caribbean Certificate. Nine out of the top 10 are engaged in work-ready communities. I wanted to give you a snapshot because Site Selection Magazine is also beginning to link academic achievement and the National Career Readiness Certificate as measures of a state's competitiveness in producing a skilled workforce. They like having a standard national industry credential that creates apples to apples when companies are making relocation decisions. Now at this point, Washington is ranked 36. I am confident a year from now that number is only going to go up because this is a great team you have in the state and they are just getting ready to launch and I've been watching the background, the work that they are doing. 
So the benefit for the counties, 97%, and we, we, we interview our counties across the country, 97% know about, these are community leaders in all those different um, uh, partnership groups I talked about. 85% said it's improving their workforce development partnerships. 94% said it demonstrates a commitment to producing a, um, a qualified workforce. 86% say it's giving them a cohesive workforce development strategy and 90% would recommend to another county. For the employers, 87% of the employers that we are surveying say, yep, I would support doing this because if I'm gonna begin to expect more on people walking in the door, I need every employer with me in my community. It takes everybody in the boat rowing together to make change. So it's just a little bit about the background I'm going to be really excited now to hear from the rest of the colleagues in Washington State and what they've been doing. Thank you. This website is, has several different uh, interest areas. One for business. If you are interested in learning why NCRC is important to you as an employer. Uh -oh. I thought, who's talking? <laughs> um, <laughs> why the NCRC is important to uh, employers. We also uh, have a section for uh, uh, communities. If your community wants to become involved, as Deborah mentioned, it takes everybody to row that boat. You need economic development. You need your local community college. You need elected officials. You need your WDC. And of course, you need uh, your K through 12 and industry partners. And if you want to be a certified work ready community, we have an application for you to fill out and to send to us. Uh, if you want to look at this later, I do have it up. The application looks like this. It has frequently asked questions. It has a checklist for you to uh, apply uh, before you send in your uh, certification or your application. There is criteria and you need letters of commitment. So we are very rigorous about this to make sure that everyone knows exactly what they're getting into and that you have buy-in from all the key stakeholders in your community. So um, please, I hope you'll uh, review this. If you decide you want to be a part of the Work Ready community, there are contact numbers there. And then you'll send this to one of our uh, state uh, uh, leadership team members, who is uh, Amy Purcell, and I'll introduce you, you to her later. Uh, but please look over this, think about it, and um, contact us if you've got any questions. The other thing I want to show you is this is the actual map. So these are the states that are currently involved in uh, work ready communities. I want you to look, we're going to just do a deep dive in a couple of states. I picked South Carolina because I know that for aerospace, that is one of the states that are trying to woo a lot of our industry partners. If you take, if you click on uh, Carolina, South Carolina, you will notice that every single county, every single county in South Carolina is a work ready uh, community. The, and the gold means that they're 100% committed, that everybody in, is that, is that correct? That, that are certified. But what's interesting is it tells you how many of the um, NCRCs have been um, um, accomplished over the year, but more importantly, these are the companies that recommend or endorse um, the uh, National Career Readiness. In South Carolina, 2,416 industry people, and that's not all of them, because we know that one of the key industries in South Carolina is Boeing itself and uh, Charleston. I want to go back, and I'm just going to show you one other state. That would be Oregon just to the south of us. I want you to check out Oregon. So all of their com uh, counties and communities uh, are certified with three gold. As Deborah mentioned, the state of Washington, we're new to this. 
We've just started out, and so I've got some exciting news. I would like to uh, bring up our team, Amy, Dawn, and um, Holly. This is your state leadership team. We went through the academy and have literally poured hours over this. We feel that this is an answer to help uh, fill the skills gap that industry is telling us is missing. Um, I am happy to announce today that our governor has agreed to sign all platinum NCRC certifications, which is a huge step. So, Please, that's a, our governor supports this. And with that, if you click on Washington State, our first county is Cowlitz County. Now, any of you who know me, I'm a pretty competitive person. <laughs> I think we can start turning on a lot more counties and become red and then eventually gold. As Deborah said, we're 36th in the nation. I believe we can be in the top 10. But it will take all of you and more to help us accomplish that and answer some of the, um, the problems that industry is telling us they're, they're experiencing. So, as I mentioned, we've got a breakout session. We're going to have a, a, um, a break after our next presenter here. And we're going to talk more about what it means to be a part of a work-ready community, how you as a WDC, how you as an educator, and how you as industry partners can help us with that. So we'll hope that you'll join us in our uh, breakout session. But for right now, I am just really, really proud of Cowlitz County, and a press release will go out tomorrow. So again, let's thank Cowlitz County. And we're going to have some HR people uh, in the breakout session that's going to talk about that journey. So thank you for joining me. Next, I'd like to bring up Jason, uh, who, is, as Barbara mentioned, is uh, here from California. They are a state that uh, is actively looking at using the National Career Readiness to, to solve some of their skills gap in their industries. Jason represents Pacific Gas and Electric Company, and they've been using it for quite some time, and they have another way that they're using the uh, National Career Readiness. So I'm going to, uh, if you'll please help me welcome Jason. He's going to talk a little bit about how California is using it in their industry. Thank you very much for having me. I want to quickly talk about how um, Pacific Gas and Electric Company, I have to be careful not to say PG&E, um, because there is a PGE um, a couple minutes south of here, and people always, um, you know, P Portland generally, no, we're Pacific Gas and Electric Company, we're in California. Um, we are, uh, you know, this is, you know, the bragging slide, we have to have um, that slide. Uh, we're one of the largest combined natural gas um, and electric utilities. Um, just over 20, this has grown a little bit, we're at about 22,000 employees now, so we're a, we're a decent sized utility. Um, and we've got a lot of customers. So um, our goal, um, our mission is to deliver safe, reliable, and affordable service. Um, and I mention that because I feel that the organization that I manage at Pacific Gas and Electric Company helps meet that mission. Um, we, have a, we have a problem, and a lot of the slides that were already presented today um, articulate a lot of what I'm going to show you, so we're just we're going over the same stuff. But this is this is how we're implementing it. We um, we're facing a, a shortage of skilled workers at Pacific Gas and Electric Company. We estimate that approximately 40% um, of our employees are eligible to retire in the next um, three to five years. Those are our skilled trades. Um, the majority are skilled trades employees. That's frightening. We, we're we're going to have a large contingency um, leave the organization in the next three to five years, and it takes time. Those who are in the trades understand that it takes time to build those skilled trades employees. It's not something you can bring a, um, a apprentice or a pre-apprentice on board, and they're a journeyman immediately. They, it takes three to five years for them to become um, a, a journeyman. So we have to address um, 
this, this concern. And we, um, we have done that through Power Pathway. Power Pathway is a, um, we create training programs um, to fill this pipeline, to create, and the, the, the technical jargon, we develop a qualified, talented pipeline of, of skilled trades workers. So what, what we do is we develop training programs. It's a 10-week training program um, to get folks ready for the utility industry. So we talk to them. Three primary focal points of our training is um, how to get the job and keep the job, that's right. Um, how to you do your resume and your interview. We teach them how to um, we teach them how to pass our pre not teach them how to pass. Excuse me. We prepare them for our pre-employment test. That was close. <laughs> if my HR folks were here, they'd be upset. Um, we teach, we prepare them for our pre-employment tests, and then we talk to them. We spend time on the um, the technical skills that they need for the job, whether it's in the gas department, the electric department. So that's what Power Pathway is. And we, um, the reason I'm here is I'm going to focus on that preparing for the pre-employment tests that the, the Pacific Gas and Electric Company offers. Um, the way we, can, a little bit more about Power Pathway, the way we work, we are a workforce develop, we're an industry run workforce development agency. So I'm part of Human Resources inside of Pacific Gas and Electric Company. And we partner with our community workforce development organizations as well as our community colleges to offer this training program to, the, to our students. Um, and that's, that three legged stool helps us um, to prepare the students and offer the wraparound services that they need to become successful. And that is what introduced us to WorkKeys. That's where we um, started with WorkKeys was our um, workforce development organizations, um, workforce investment boards brought that um, tool to us in our, in our toolbox. So um, we use WorkKeys in our um, pre or excuse me, in our pre-screening process for Power Pathway. So I wanna be very clear we do not use work keys in our hiring process. Um, that's another HR, I have to say that for HR. We, we use our pre-employment tests, and I'll talk a little bit about those, in, as a screening tool in our, in our hiring process. We use power, um, the work keys as a screening tool for our Power Pathway program. Because it's a training, we want to see what their, foundation, their foundational education is for, um, for that training. So we want to make sure that they're at a certain level so that our training can help bring them to the level they need to be at um, to, to become employed. So this is a very big diagram about how we screen folks for, this is for our training program. So before students can get into our training program, they go through all of this. And one of those steps is um, work keys. They have to um, take the reading for information, um, locating information, and applied mathematics. What we have found is that Power Pathway students who have passed the pre-employment tests um, have an on average higher work key score than those who do not pass. So there is a correlation between the students who have um, high work key scores and the students that pass our pre-employment tests. That, that kind of should go without saying. We're, we're gauging what, what um, skills, work skills they have and that's a direct correlation to their ability to pass our pre-employment tests. Um, the, the numbers that are here, uh, well, let me, let me talk a little bit about the, the tests that are up here. There's three tests. Our PTB is a math test. Our IST is a um, mechanical aptitude test. And WOI is a behavioral-based test um, for, for pre-employment. Work keys doesn't address um, the three career readiness certificates don't address the behavioral aspect but we do see a gains in the, the PTB, the math test and the mechanical aptitude test. Uh, the scores that are here, those are what um, Deborah was talking about with the gold, uh, the platinum, gold, and silver. The five is a silver level certificate. And um, so these are averages. You cannot score a 5.5 on the career readiness certificate, but these are average, average scores um, through through our tests. So the key takeaways, um, Power Pathway graduates have work keys um, scores ranging from four to seven. Um, we, we 
focus on scores um, five and or yeah five and above on reading and math, and we ask for a four or above in locating information. Um, and there's there's a subtle nuance as to why we do that. The locating information you cannot score. Um, there is not a seven in locating. Um, locating information is um, gold level of six is the highest. So that's we five five four um, is locating information, and um, so the um, the majority of power pathway students um, basically what and it, you know I feel like I'm I'm droning on. It's after lunch. It's hot in here. I'm wearing a jacket. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, thank you. Um, so I will for the for the, the the forum. My goodness. So basically what. Um, what, what I came to articulate is that we, we're trying to find the best to fill this pipeline, to create a pipeline of qualified workers for our company. Um, we, we have found this WorkKeys um, exam is a great screening tool to have in our back pocket and use to find the education level where the students are now. And we can, we use that we set where they are now, and we know what we need to what we need to teach above that to help them be successful um, hires at our company. So it's a um, it's a great tool, very informational, and um, we we use it for every single one of our students. We screen probably about um, probably about two two thousand twenty five hundred students every year are taking this work keys exam um, as a, a screening tool get, to get into Power Pathway. So ultimately, it's been a great success for us. We've been using it for about five years. And um, I look forward to answering any questions um, during the forum. So thank you very much for your time. So these are proctored uh, assessments. We've got them at our, um, what I'm trying to do is bring up, here we go. I want to show you where our testing sites are. So you can go on our website, and most of them are, they're all located here, or you can find them um, by using this tab here. But most of them are at community and technical colleges. Uh, they're in our testing centers. They are proctored assessments, and they're usually attached to some type of a program, either through the pre-employment or uh, pre-apprenticeship programs. Currently, with the WISE grant, we're able, we're, our goal is to assess 800 of our students uh, that are involved in the eight community technical colleges that are a part of the WISE grant. We're working with our WDCs as well through WorkSource. Uh, many of the WorkSource are currently using the partner to this, which is the skill up piece, and that's key train. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, I believe, in the breakout session. So if you don't score well, that's one of the questions we're asked. Uh, most frequently is, okay, so what then? Well, we do have a counterpart, the Key Train, which is an online, uh, um, online system that helps you skill up that you can practice so that you can score uh, somewhere between one or two levels higher. So these are the uh, different testing sites. Uh, the contact information is here. If you want more information, we'll get back to you. Um, but um, that about... That's about all we have to say. I want to thank our guests again, for, uh, Deborah and Jason, for attending. And uh, we look forward to having you here back after the break uh, to drill down and talk a little bit more about Work Ready Washington. Thank you so much.